Hey guys, it's Nate, aka The Foot Accountant. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are talking about a very highly requested trading method from a lot of you guys in the comments, in the Twitch streams, and everywhere else. It is how to trade with icons on FIBA 22 Ultimate Team. In a market where golds are supplied so much, it seems like everything is dropping in price almost every single day. Icons have been a great way to trade this year because they have been kind of a mainstay, right? You don't have to worry about their prices dropping a ton. In fact, they've only risen a lot until the past week or so when they started to dip off. They've mostly only risen, which has made them incredible incredible vehicles to trade and make coin coins on this market. What we're going to do today is take a look at how to trade with icons in terms of which icons you could buy, right? Um, how to know what filters when you're searching the market, if you want to do some search filters, what kind of filters you can set up. Just knowing how icons move with the rest of the market when we have promo panic, when we have promo supply, and of course some extra info when you're looking to flip these cards. Again, this is one of my favorite trading methods on this game. Uh, I, I got this Carlos Alberto for 698,000 coins um, earlier today on stream, sold it for 747, literally less than an hour later, right? First flip, this car went up basically 50,000 coins and I made like, what was that, like 15K of profit after that? We'll talk about profit ranges and tax and all that stuff in today's video too, right? A lot of information, but if you're wanting to learn about trading icons, this is gonna be the one to help you out. So if you're excited for the video, hit a thumbs up on it and of course, subscribe if you are new. So what's what's so scary about trading icons, right? That, that's what I often hear people ask, like icons seem really scary to trade with. Why, why do you trade with these cards that are so expensive? Well, if it didn't work, we wouldn't do it, but it works and we do it, right? I know that icons seem very scary and they seem very expensive and it's like, man, I'm gonna lose coins when I trade with these cards because they're just so expensive. But the, these cards fluctuate so much on the market that yes, even though there's a 5% tax and you have to cover that tax to make coins, you can still do that easily with many, many, many icons every single day on the market because their prices move because these icons are so unique to the game. They're so special, right? And people like icons for many different reasons, especially their links, right? These icons provide links in FIFA that no other cards do. They literally link to any single card and then of course get strong links based off of the nation. So that makes them have some intrinsic value that no other cards in this game actually have. This Sambrata at 507 is actually kind of a low price at the moment. So uh, I might, okay, never mind, it's gone. So I won't keep tabs on that. But anyways, I wanna talk about, first of all, how do you know what's a good price to buy an icon and what icons should you buy? Well, the great thing is the website that we just looked at, footbin.com, is the number one place for research and the best place to find out where an icon sells at when an icon dips low, right? A lot of cards that we talk about with fluctuation trading, like for informs um, or you know chemistry style trading and stuff like that, we're looking at graphs and we're looking at, hey, this card went up and down this much. How do I know it's a good price? Well, he's down on his graph. It's the exact same thing for the icons, right? This is an example that I have right now. It's fresh because I just bought a Stoichkov 90 for 880,000 coins just about 10 minutes ago as I was preparing for this video, it popped up on the market and I said, oh, that's a good price, I'm gonna buy it, right? So I bought Stoichkov at 880. How did I know that was a good price? And how do I know I can make profit on this card? Well, I know that this Stoichkov card fluctuates between the low 900 range. If we take a look at his price yesterday, he went between about, you know, low 900s. His lowest on the day shows is about 915K but he also reached points of like 954, right? He reached 950 basically twice, and then he reached 915 basically two times as well. And you'll see those fluctuations throughout the day on a lot of these icons. That's how I know I can sell this Twitch cop around 950. Now, another added, uh, I guess you could say, benefit of this Footbin website is that with this newer feature that they've added, they added it last year, you can actually see the sales on the market. This this tracks the sales on the PlayStation or Xbox or PC market that this card has sold at uh, in the past couple of days. So that I can see right now, 934, 910. This Deutschkopf was just low, right? But he sold literally two hours ago at 950. He sold at nine, where was it? There was a 960, 955, 958. So me buying this card at 880K, I know that I'm gonna be able to sell this within the next day around 950,000 coins. Now, hopefully, you know, of course, when you're talking efficiency and trading with these high tier, high level cards, you want the fluctuations to happen pretty fast, right? You don't wanna be waiting multiple days. And the reason I bought this storage card too is that I know 
that he's got 90 pace, 90 dribbling, 90 shooting. He does have the three-star weak foot, but he is an icon that has got, you know, pretty reliable and pretty good stats. And, you know, I see his price moving up and down multiple times per day. I see these kind of like low 900s, then he goes up in the mid 900s, then he goes back down. Seeing that sort of fluctuation on this card makes me know that, hey, I might be holding this card for a couple hours and then boom, I'm going to be taking my, what is that? If I sell at 950 and uh, there's about 47K of tax there, so I'm going to be making a solid like 23K on this card if I sell it at 950. That's a solid flip, right? That is a solid flip. You're like, yo, Nate, you're spending 900,000 coins to make 20K? Yeah. Because you can do this when you get a higher coin amount, you can do this multiple times today with multiple different cards and it starts, you just start rolling in the profit, right? A 20,000 coin flip done five to six times per day, that takes a lot less time and effort um, than it does to try to go out and make that same amount of coins, like 100, 120K per day by, you know, um, chemistry style trading or trading with silvers or even fluctuation trading in forms out of packs. This icon method is very profitable because the profits come in fast and they're usually pretty chunk, nice, nice chunky profits, right? 20K, 30K a card. That's what you're looking for on a lot of these items, especially in this higher tier range. That makes me also put this point out there. It is best to icon trade when you have over a million coins. A million coins is like the best range because that means I could go out and buy two 500K icons or I could at least go buy like an 800K icon like this this uh, baby storage cloth is right around 700K, right? If I saw like a 660 for this, as you can see, I was really hoping for this card to get in the 660s today. I watched him on my transfer targets. He didn't quite get there. Now he's back up to 700K where he usually is. You know, if you've got a million coins, you can buy a 700K card and then go trade with the rest of your 300K and still do a lot of different methods and not feel like you have no coins left uh, on this market. So that's kind of what I would say. A million coins is a good place to start. Technically, you could do it with less, but I don't really trade with any icons under like four to 500K because I really don't feel like they're as profitable unless you catch them like just right. Uh, and you, you catch like a big undercut and you get maybe even a little bit lucky with, with some open bids or with some panic selling or something uh, like that. So that is what I would say. But the number one thing is use your transfer targets as well. Everybody talks about foot bin. Use your transfer targets to keep track of prices, right? I watch cards. I'll wipe this transfer targets. I'll wipe it clean. I'll remember these prices tomorrow when I get on the game. And I'll start back looking on the market and say, all right, what card is low? What card am I going to keep an eye on? I was watching this Essien because he was kind of getting low, 965. If I saw like a 930, you know, another 20, 30K down from where that card was listed, I was going to buy. So that's what I would recommend as well is keep an eye on this transfer targets, add cards to your watch list because that will give you information that you need. And, and, and that will tell you just as good as Footbin or better, you'll actually get to see it in the game of when a card sells, you'll know that card sells at that price. So we've talked about what kind of icons to buy. Again, rarity is king, right? Rarity is king on these cards. If we take a look, uh, let me let me dive into this a little bit more. Rarity is huge this year on the game because everything is so pack supplied. Icons are rare as it is, but take a look at the supply on somebody like this Carlos Alberto. We have, um, when I compare price, we've got one page. We have got two pages with only two cards on the second page. This icon is really rare. This guy is really, really rare. Now, let's again search at like Essien, right? If I compare price on Essien, one, two, three, he's got four pages of cards when I compare price right now. So not saying you can't trade with Essien, you just have a little bit more competition of cards being listed on the market with some of these items. So I try to focus on the rare ones because those are the cards that are gonna move around the fastest and the quickest. That's why I was looking at this Embrata, right? Because if I get anywhere near under 510K, I know I can sell this card overnight at about 540, which there's a 535, there's a 519, and there's a 545 and a 546. So if I could snag one of these at 500K, I know that I could list it up at 540, 545, and probably get a sale in the next you know, in the next day or in the next couple of hours, even as these cards fluctuate up and down in price naturally, right? Natural fluctuations is the big part of this. So that's what I would say is rarity is king for a lot of these cards. Now, how do you start learning prices? Well, how do you know when to sell and when to buy? Just start adding cards to your transfer targets, right? Watch a few cards that are in your price range, like we talked about. And that'll be a great way to actually just start learning a few cards, right? One way that I look up card prices is by going on Footbin. And actually just searching under players. You go up here to the players tab, click FIFA 22 players, go down to version, 
and then sort by icons, either base or middle, right? So I'm gonna click on base, and I'm gonna sort by price, click on the PS button right there, and then I'm gonna go down here, and, and I don't really like trading with icons over like 1.5 mil right now, because I don't have like, you know, three, four million coins that I could do, you know, multiple icons at a time. I like to do stuff that's around a million coins or under. So I'm gonna take a look through some of these cards, and since I kind of know some of these prices already, um, I can say like, okay, that Rio Ferdinand is kind of down, 839,000 coins. Okay, boom, look, his price just updated and he's 880. So boom, that I might have just missed an opportunity on Rio because he was definitely just 839K. And as I look at his graph, he does go to 880s and he does drop down into the 850s. Boom, if I had that 839, then we get one more undercut to like, you know, 810 or 820. And I'm selling right now at 880. That's another solid like 20K profit on that flip that could have been a potential play. So this is where I go to kind of look for some cards, find some cards that are in your range that you see their prices and their graphs moving around a lot, right? Uh, like this Zambrato is one that moves around a decent amount. This Shevchenko is one that moves. Uh, even the Seedorf, I believe, 680K, that's a little bit low for him. Now, as we sit right now when I'm recording this video, um, in the last couple of days of October, Icons kind of reached a peak a couple of weeks ago, basically one week ago and they've started to slide back down a little bit. This is probably, in my opinion, for most icons, the slide is gonna continue uh, into like the Black Friday timeframe. So I don't think you're gonna see these icons like really rising back up a ton like they were, um, but you can still trade with these cards every single day because in my opinion, icons are some of the most consistent cards in price on this market. It takes a big panic and big supply to make these cards move a lot in price. We'll talk about that a little bit in, in the later parts of the video too, but you can either find cards by looking through specific items on this game and looking for cards that have low prices and looking through these graphs and learning prices, or you can also do some filters, right? Now I wanna show you one of my favorite filters. Now right now I only have 600,000 coins, so this is not a really good filter for me at the moment, but if I search minimum buy now 700K, and let's go max by now 1.1 mil. The reason why I'm putting my filter here is because I know a lot of the icon prices between 700K and about 1 million coins, right? That's kind of like my area where I like to trade with the icons, especially this year, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna search the max price, the 15 million, refresh that, and I'm gonna get to the 59th minute as fast as I can. Now, this is a way that you can find icon undercuts very quickly when they get listed up. 705 for Cedarf, again, we just saw he was 680. That's not that good of a price. So boom, this is basically called spamming the 59th minute and that Baggio is sort of low. So that's sort of low on Baggio. I need to see like a 7, 770 probably to flip him up into like 840 range. I need to see like a 775 maybe. So what I'm gonna do though is when I go into search again, I'm gonna click max price and then I'm gonna search, go to that 59th minute as fast as possible and try to find maybe an undercut snipe, right? This is the most popular way of icon trading 100% because people go to that 59th minute, they look for undercuts and they look for snipes because that is where you see people listing up their icons, maybe a little bit too cheap um, because they, they want the coins, they need to get the sale or whatever the reason may be. This is where you see people list up those icons really, really cheap. So again, general rule of thumb when I'm searching for icons, uh, I usually do my minimum buy now about, you know, 50 to 60% of my max buy now. So if I had 1.1 million coins, I would be using the same search. Maybe drop it down to 650 later at night. Make your search filter a little bit wider when the market is, is rare uh, so that you can include some more cards in there because I got to the 59th here in what, five pages? Like five pages, that's really, really easy, right? In the middle of the daytime with this filter, it would be taking me probably like 15 to 20 pages to get to that 59th minute. But right now it's nighttime UK so the market's pretty rare. So that is how I get to the 59th minute. Now that is one filter method you can do. Another method is basically finding icons that were just listed up on the market at a minimum bid, like a low bid start price. Now this is how, sometimes how you find some really crazy undercuts and deals, but the people that are on this filter know prices very, very well. This is a very competitive filter. And I'll be honest and say it's, it's kind of sweaty, right? I don't use this filter like ever, but a lot of people do. Uh, and it looks like my, this filter might not even be working or correct at the moment because a lot of cards listed at 90K overnight. Um, but basically what you're gonna do with this is you're gonna sit here and compare price. I might have this too high, let's go 95K. I think this works better during the day because there's people that fix this filter. You can see people bidding 90K on all these icons so that they can catch the ones under 90,000 coin start price 
back here at the 59th minute. So what you do is you get back here and you click X or square to compare price back out. Like this Casillas, 240,000 coins. You know, he's got some overnights at 250, probably not a deal. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to sit here and compare price and back out and wait for another icon to be listed up at a minimum bid price. And then maybe it's a big undercut that I'd be able to snipe and, you know, trade that card. That's another filter that you can use. Uh, again, you kind of have to play with it to make it work. I do not recommend this filter because it is very sweaty. A lot of people do it. You will pick up deals here, but you have to know a lot of prices because you're going to get a lot of cards that pop up under this filter. Uh, and so that, that's why I really don't mess with this that much. And we haven't seen, I know it's nighttime, but we haven't seen a single one pop up yet. I'm kind of hoping to see one pop up here in a second or two, but that's part of the fun with the 59 searching and using filters like this too, is like the, it's just the, you never know. You never know what you might find in the 59th minute. If you're searching back there with your coins and, uh, you all of a sudden see like last week I got to the 59th minute and there was a baby Zidane who was a 3 million coin car, like 2.7, 2.8 mil card. He was listed, uh, for a crazy, crazy price. Somebody listed him up for 999,000 coins. And that was obviously incredibly, incredibly cheap. Um, and somebody who just messed up big time on that listing, but that's the kind of, that's kind of like the, the potential that, you know, everybody wants to do 59th minute sniping on icons because you could get an insane deal like that. Those deals are very few farm in between, but you know, they do pop up sometimes. So those are some filters that you can use. Uh, let me talk about some other specific things for icons this year. The trend with icons has been a lot of the cards drop down right before 6 p.m. UK, a content drop. Because again, what people are doing this year is they know the market's moving so much is that they're selling their icons right before the content drop or the hour or so before content drop almost every single day. People are, people are selling icons because they're afraid of what content might come that might drop their cards in price. So a lot of times what I've been doing this year is buying icons in the hour or two period before 6 p.m. as you see some panic selling and people listing cards down and that kind of creates a little bit of a, a valley, right? These cards get low. And then of course, when, when content comes out, you know, it probably nine times out of 10 it does not affect icons. That's what happened to this Carlos Alberto today. I bought a Carlos Alberto after he was panic sold down to, you know, 700K. He was like 710. I was like, okay, I just need one more undercut to be like 700K flat or below. And I know I can sell this right around 750. And again, I got a 698, sold it for 747, made myself about like what, 10, 15,000 coins right there. W, right? That is kind of how the, the daily fluctuation of these icons work. And these icons get rare. Like right now when I'm recording this video, a lot of these icons are more rare than usual. Usually Carl Sobreto has about like 15 cards or so on the market, maybe like 10 to 15. And right now he only has like nine. So um, that he is def definitely a little bit more rare. There's actually a few more overnight listings than normal on this card. But at nighttime, icons get rare, which usually means their prices go up. So like right now with this Baggio being kind of cheap, I see a lot of overnights at like 840. If this guy, the one that's at 790, it looks like it's sold. No, 790, there's an 800, and then there's an open bid at 778. If one of these does not sell and this guy relists, right? You watch out for the relist a lot with icons too. If this guy would relist at like 775, he really wants to get rid of his card. I would probably buy that because it looks like I'd be able to sell for like 840. Uh, in the next few hours with that card and where it looks to be. So that is why I like trading with icons because there's a, a little bit of like, you know, anticipation with it too. You're hoping that the market slides back up, but you know that it will because these cards are rare and they're in demand and they're just, they're just so often to trade with, right? That was, that'd be the number one thing that I would say too. If you buy a card, have faith that it goes back up, right? You have to have a little bit of, I guess, faith and belief in that card and that people want to use it in the game. That's why I don't really like to trade with cards that are, you know, under a hundred thousand coins. Like we looked at that, that icon filter and some of the icons that were coming up were like baby Bobby Moore. Uh, I don't like trading with those icons because how many people in this game are actually using a lot of those cards? I just don't think there's that many. Yeah, there's going to be some, but I don't think there's as many people using cards like that uh, as some of the ones that like I have on my transfer list, right? The actual usable meta ones that people want to try on their team. These are the icons that people are going out and spending some coin on and putting into their squad. So those are the ones that I like to trade with the most on this game. Uh, some other notes, fresh icons always sell for more, 100%. 
Uh, so a good time to look for icons is actually on Promo Fridays, right? Promo the icons follow the market in a sense, whereas they get supply too. You'll see on Promo Fridays when there's a lot of packs opened, you'll see a lot of basic, right? They have just the basic chemistry style, fresh icons listed up. A fresh icon means that it has been just packed or it has no games played, right? You you click on the card, you see like this hold it when it was listed was was a fresh, right? No games played, first owner, and that means that it's never been used. And people on this game pay extra coins. Sometimes it's 10, 20, 30,000 coins. I've even had fresh cards sell for 100,000 coins more in my years of icon trading. Uh, because they have no games played. And for whatever reason, people say that fresh icons sell better or play better in game, not just sell better, they play better in game. That's why people buy them off the market as a fresh item. So whether you believe in that or not, a lot of people on this game uh, operate under that information. So when you see these cards listed up and you see that basic chemistry style, that is a sign that, that the icon might be a fresh card, especially you know, around 6 p.m. content drop, if we had a, a promo pack release, or even with preview packs, right? We've seen it this year that I see a lot more fresh icons popping up on the 59th because they're just preview packs and people pack icons out of preview packs, as crazy as it seems. So those are a couple things to note with icons as well. Uh, and yes, there's a lot of icon panic selling usually on promo Fridays leading into the content drop because people are scared about what promos are gonna come. But then a lot of times those icons rise back. So. It's just icons are some of the most stable cards in the game, which is kind of, I guess, backwards to where you might think a lot of people say that icons are really risky to trade with. The riskiest part of icons is if your card does not fluctuate back up or it, it go as high as you as you wanted it to be, and then you're basically going to end up losing on tax. If you make a good buy and like the market's going to go down, let's let's say that I bought that Stoich Cobb at 880k and the market starts to go down tomorrow, and I'm like, shoot, I need to get out of this before the market continues to drop more. So I list it up at you know 890K, and I lose whatever, like 30K on tax. That's your biggest risk with there, right? Which you can make that tax loss right back with another icon flip. So I think that's why people are scared to flip icons, because it feels like so much coins are going into one card. But I'm telling you, this is one of the most profitable and one of the most fun ways to trade. It just, it, it hits different when you trade with some of these big name cards from years past and just knowing that somebody who's buying this item like loves this player or you know just has memories of this player for playing for their favorite team or you know there's just so much nostalgia that goes into the icons which makes them so fun to use on fifa and fun to trade with uh, in this game as well so hopefully that helps a lot with trading with icons on this game again number one thing is just learn prices add cards to your transfer targets watch their price and trust that when you see a card fluctuate down, like I've been watching this Zambrata on this video, there's a couple of them here that have been listed in the low 500s. There was one that was a 504 open bid, this one, right? I'm gonna add this to my targets because hey, when this expires, if I can snag this for under 510, probably like 507 would be the highest that I would go. Uh, I think that I could get like a 540 sale in the next few hours, especially overnight on this card. So watch for the rarity, watch for prices, use footbin, right? And if you just wanna watch prices for a day or two, great, watch prices for a day or two, then start to make some buys. Um, and then, you know, you're gonna have a lot of fun. Uh, icons are really great to trade with on the weekends or after Wednesday, or after Thursday, because on Thursdays, division rivals rewards come out and people get into that weekend league mode. They get into champs qualifiers, they get their rivals games going again. That is a fantastic time to trade with these cards because there's a little bit more gameplay demand. Uh, from Thursday until Monday uh, on this market. So that is another thing to kind of watch out for is people are playing with these cards, right? These aren't just cards that people are buying. They don't put these into SBCs unless you're crazy. Some people do that for memes at the end of the year. But that is why, th that's icon trading right there, boys. That is icon trading laid out as simply as I can put it with as most information and the most help that I can give you with trading with icons on this game. It's fun, right? It's so fun to trade with these cards. It's basically just fluctuation trading like we do with special cards, but with a higher tier and a higher budget with these icons. So again, always remember your tax. Rarity is king and watch out for panic selling because panic selling is one of the best ways that you can make coins on icons. When somebody lists too low, you swoop in, pick up that undercut and when the panic selling kind of stops, boom, they're back up to where they were and you sell and you make profit. That is how to trade with icons inside of FIFA 22. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to hit a thumbs up on it. Comment down below if you have any questions and subscribe if you're new. It's been Nate the Foot Accountant. I'll catch you guys later. Peace.